Hello and welcome to this week's League of Legends Power Rankings where I go over the top 25 teams, in my opinion, as of the moment. Um, so, I've done this the last couple weeks and now we finally have the LEC and LCS games, you know, splits have started. Um, so I can actually like do this and have a top 25. So... This week, I took out the PCS teams and the Vietnamese teams because they haven't played yet and they're not going to play anytime soon. Well, uh, the PCS might start up in a week or so, so that minor region video will get done. Um, Vietnam, I last I checked, I still don't know when they're going to start. Japan's supposed to start this weekend, though. Um, so, in this week's power rankings, you'll notice that J-Team's not in here. Um, Saigon Buffalo, GAM and um, Flying Oyster. Those four teams I had in there last week because they are the best teams right now in the smaller regions um, when it comes to PCS and VCS respectively. Um, PSG Talon, maybe they're making more moves, but as of right now, their team I don't think is one of the top teams in the PCS. So those four teams are out. Um, as far as teams that we know who have played, we've seen them play who are out. KT Rolster has dropped out of the top 25. The Kwang Dong Freaks have dropped out of the top 25. IG and Rogue are all out of my top 25. That's how they're playing right now. It's just a matter of fact. Um, now, you have to look at this. If you're a foreign individual who is not from the United States, you're not going to really get this. But for those that do and follow college football, college basketball, their top 25 rankings you know, a lot of people vote on those and create those rankings, but you'll notice that once in a while you have a team like Cincinnati in the top 25 or Boise State or St. Mary's in basketball or Gonzaga, thing, teams that are smaller, you know, from smaller regions that perform well. We don't really know how they're going to perform until international tournaments go on. So you're going to notice that I have three teams at the bottom of these rankings and a couple other teams sprinkled in there that are going to make you wonder why are they in there over a team like Rogue or IG? Well, when push comes to shove, how do we know this undefeated team isn't better than one of those teams in a bigger region? So, um, starting off 25th, I have Direwolves. And if you'll notice, this is an orange because um, orange is for the minor region teams. Why am I putting Direwolves? I'm supposed to be putting DW. Don't have enough space to be putting the whole damn team name in here so um dire wolves are four and two right now in the lco um which kind of goes against what i just said oh well an undefeated team well dire wolves one of their losses is against a team i still have to put in the rankings and their wins have been big um dire wolves have looked good to start the split in oceana 24th we have astral esports astral um is four and oh right now in latin america um, coming off of a very strong spring, despite losing a couple of their members, still strong. So, as far as I'm concerned, that organization must have it going on regardless of what my preseason predictions were. Um, and 23rd, we have Chief Esports. Um, Chief Esports Club are 6-0 and right now in Oceana. In spring, they were the best team during the regular split and then lost in the playoffs and order ended up going to MSI. So over a longer period of time, Chief Esports are actually better than what we saw out of Oceana and MSI. And we all can agree that sometimes the best teams from a region, especially for MSI, go to MSI. If you go on a good run during the playoffs, if that patch is just one that works for you, you can make a run and make it in... in I mean, are we really going to say EG isn't better than TL on paper during spring? Probably not. Are you going to say G2? Well, G2's, well, G2's on this board this week. But, um, um, you know, you, you can't say that always the um, MSI representative is the best team. So, 23rd is Chief Esports Club. I'm done with Orange. I don't need Orange anymore. Those are the three minor region teams this week. Um, 22nd, though. We have Astralis, and you're going to say, why the hell would you put Astralis 22nd? And, you know, you got a good point. Why would I have Astralis 22nd? I'm not a big fan of Astralis, to be honest with you, but results are results. Right now, they are 2-1. They beat Misfits 
They beat, um, no, yeah, they beat Misfits, beat BDS. Misfits have been awful to start the split, absolutely awful. And they lost to G2. Um, G2 is on this board. If you haven't watched my power rankings before, in my opinion, when it push comes to shove, if you lose to teams that are better than you or at your, I mean, that are better than you on paper, I'm not going to, you know, hurt you in rankings because of that. I mean, you aren't as good as that team. But when you beat teams around you, that says a lot. Astralis right now, I have 22nd. I think that they're playing quite well. Um, 21st, we have Excel. Excel only losses to G2 as well. Excel did very well against Misfits and Fnatic. So, um, those, I mean, a win over Fnatic is massive for a team like Excel. Um, they've had some interesting, um, you know, an in, in, interesting team going on there, to say the very least. Um, it's not like Astralis where, I mean, both teams really don't inspire me all that much, but I do like Mickey X and Bot. I think Mickey X gives um, the the uh, Excel team a chance in Bot lane. Um, Patrick's look good to start the split. Uh, Nuke Duck's better than expected, and uh, Marcoon is the facilitator, and I've always been a Marcoon fan. Um, 20th, I have C9, and this is where I think, ooh, uh, sorry. C9 drops two spots uh, to 20th. Um, they're 0-3, which is going to be weird. Why do you have an 0-3 team up here? Well, they haven't had their bot lane. I mean, they've had King and Destiny, who's an Academy bot lane playing for them, and they lost to EG, Golden Guardians, and TL. So two of those teams, Golden Guardian loss is pretty embarrassing. You don't want to lose to Golden Guardians, no matter if you have an Academy roster or not. But EG and TL are two teams on this list. There are two teams that are probably in the conversation, if not definitely going to be going to Worlds in, um, you know, October or whatever. So... For them to lose to them with an Academy bot lane is whatever. Fudge has looked okay. Blabber looked really good at times. Jensen looks like he didn't miss a step, a beat, or anything. So, C9, I have 20th, and I think this is like the lowest they'll be because um, they're going to have their bot lane, Berserker and uh, Zven, eventually here. Um, 19th, we have Weebo. Weebo continue to cause us issues right Weibo is that team um last week they beat team we lost to rng are sitting at two and two dropped two of my rankings were 17th last week Weibo can be the best team in the world at times and also like not even worthy of being on this list at times it all depends on if the shy wants to int um if angel wants to come out and perform wanfeng is pretty consistent on is pretty consistent as well as s of m um but it comes down to the shy and angel in my opinion that's you know what we gotta really look at on that team um 18th i have fanatic which is kind of low but at the same time they struggled uh losing to excel is not acceptable in my opinion if you're fanatic um do i have them above excel still because i still think fanatic on paper should get the better of excel but in that game they lost they beat rogue they beat sk uh, the bot lane looked really, really good. Um, I mean, Fnatic are good. Fnatic are a good team. They they are definitely a top 20 team. Um, and the loss to Excel should not be too big of a deal. Um, 17th, new to the list. I have 100 Thieves. Um, 100 Thieves are pretty consistent. They give you the same thing every week. Um, regardless of anything, they're going to give you the same result every week. So, beat TS TSM, beat Dignitas, lost to EG. Um, someday has looked solid, closers look good. Abadage still is iffy. Um, that is the problem with this team. Abadage, I don't think, is really carrying his weight. Um, that whole going to NA and retiring thing, I mean, he's not at the age to retire. But I think that the NA solo queue and NA environment has really hurt his play um but they're the same every week they play the same style and some and sometimes that hurts them that's why they're limited when um playoffs come around and if they go to international events that's why they're limited at international events they're predictable um it's kind of how it is uh 16th i have vitality 
vitality continues to kind of give us mixed results. What do we think about vitality? Well, on paper, they're definitely on this uh, chart. They're a very good team on paper. And I like to see that Alfari was willing to play some tanks this past week. I think I saw Sejuani and Orn in two of the three games, and that is huge. If he's willing to do that, this team is okay. They allowed perks to carry. That was good. Um, beat Misfits and BDS. Lost to Mad Lions. Mad Lions are on this list, so not an awful loss. Um, excuse me. Beating BDS and Misfits. Those are two wins you need. Clearly, they're better than the bottom basement dwellers of um, the LEC. 15th up eight spots. We have EG. EG, like we already went over, they have beaten um, 100 Thieves and C9, as well as FlyQuest. Um, EG, Inspired, has performed. Um, JoJo, I think, was okay in a game. Danny looked really good in a game. Um, Balkan pulled out, I think, a Sona once. Um, so, I like to see that. I mean, Balkan is definitely the, the weight that's holding this team back. So, um Hopefully over sp over summer they get better. We'll see going forward. Um, a return back to the LPL. We have LNG 14th. Um, LNG are dropping nine spots. They only played Thunder Talk, which they won last week. Um, Tarzan and Doonby. Doonby was active in that game, I believe. Um, but there's still a little bit left to be desired out of this squad. I think it went three games which is not very good. Um, according to my algorithm and stat wise, which I don't, which I used only a little bit in these rankings just to figure out what I want to do when it came to the smaller regions and how they might have fit into the, to the rankings. Um, but those stats are telling me Thunder Talk are a lot better than we think they are. Um, and LNG had to go to three games against them. So LNG aren't as good as we thought they were. Um, 13th, you have DRX. DRX has played two series so far. They're new to the rankings. DRX right now are that um, fourth best um, LCK team, at least stats and record-wise. I mean, KT drops out, but DRX are the fourth best team. 2-0. They beat uh, Fred at Breon last week in a convincing fashion. Two 2-0s, two that is what it is. And their upcoming schedule is not that bad. So I could see this team definitely being on the list next week. Um, next, I have the top-ranked uh, LCS team in TL. Uh, team Liquid, I do think, are better than these teams. Um, some people are going to say, oh, well, it's NA, NA sucks. Yeah, well, there's nobody on TL that's from NA. You have a European top laner. European jungler, European mid laner, European AD carry, and a Korean world champion support. They're 12th. They went 3-0, beating Immortals, Dignitas, C9. Team had a perfect game against Immortals. They're really good. Um, nothing else needs to really be said other than that. They're really good. Um, I expect them to just continue going up my stats, and I'm going to kind of have to be limited how far I put them up this list because i mean internationally i don't know how this team's going to do but um i don't think that they're like super good um internationally that is um 11th i'm going to change my rankings as i go here i didn't want to do this but i am ultra prime originally i had them ninth that's not a thing there's no way that they're better than the next two teams right now so ultra prime are two and one they beat Rare Adam last week. Um, Ultra Prime has looked really good with Zoom and Top. Zoom and Top, um, Kryans in mid. Um, Hacker has looked okay, actually. Elk is very good. Elk has always been very good. So, Ultra Prime are 11th. I, I really like Elk. And I hope that um, the solo lanes continue to perform. And this team might actually be a playoff team. Um, 10th, we have EDG, the defending world champions. EDG have struggled. They're three and one, but they lost to JDG this past week. Um, it went to three games against IG. They are not as good as we thought they would be in um, summer. 
in spring at first they were okay but once they hit a wall mid spring they fell off a cliff and they never really recovered and as of right now i don't think they've recovered um, scout has been okay at times flandre has been solid and consistent jj has better been better than i expected but it's a bot lane viper and mako are supposed to be like arguably the best bot lane in the world and they're not playing like even a top five bot lane um viper looked really good on the zeri though against um ig so maybe they continue to do that going forward in games two and game three uh yesterday i believe so hopefully that continues um in ninth place we have top uh, top are going up one spot. They beat IG and BLG. Continue to win. Um, Knight looked good. Uh, Wayward is kind of iffy. I don't think Wayward really stuck out. Tian did really well on the Viego. Jackie Love looked okay and pretty good. Um, so top are kind of where they've been all year long. Um, playoffs in spring, they looked really good and towards the end of spring. But for a large part, portion of spring, they were in the middle so for them to be ninth, I'm not surprised. Um, eighth, I have Mad Lions. Um, so Mad Lions with Nitsky look very good. This team looks complete. Like it looks like a complete team after three games. Three games. They look complete. Arma is solid in top. Elioya is doing very well. Niski completes this team with Unforgiven and Kaiser and Bot. Kaiser, one of the better supports, I believe, in the LEC um, and in the West, for that matter. So, I think the Mad Lions are a really good team right now. They lost to Rogue on a fight that they should have won. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they should have won that game. So, they're eighth place. I think Mad Lions look really nice. Um, Damn one is seventh. Um, Damwon are not moving in the rankings. They would beat Sandbox but lose to Gen G. I mean, Gen G's in your wheelhouse now. Oh, well, they lost to a good team. Yeah, well, that's also a team. You're a good team, so clearly you aren't at their level yet. Um, beating Sandbox, good for you. I think they did a 2 0. You should beat Sandbox. Um, but Gen G went to three games and they had no answer for Lahenz's Singed, which we'll get to later because Gen G are still left to go. Um, but damn one seventh for my european fans g2 is sixth which is should make you pretty happy because now they're finally no longer here they're here they're three and oh despite not getting a lot of scrim time that yone yasuo combination was absolutely cracked um this team is i mean with drafts like that they're, they're cracked um they beat rogue um, XL and Astralis. I mean, team's super good. What are you going to do? Team's super good. Um, Targamus is great in bot. Uh, Caps is playing really good. Broken Blade is playing the best league he's played in his whole career. Um, Yankos completes the team. Um, Flacket doesn't screw up. So they're sixth. Uh, fifth, we have RNG. Um,. Uh, given BLG's struggles, maybe RNG did win the Breathe for Ben pseudo trade signing transfer, whatever deal that was. Um, this meta fits Jahu to a T. Jahu loves this meta. That's why MSI did was so good for um, RNG in addition to just being good players. They move up one spot. They beat Weibo and FPX. They've only played two series so far. Um, RNG are just really good. Uh, that goes without saying, really. I mean... Just like beating a dead horse. Fourth, we have Gen G. Um, Gen G do not move. I mean, when you get up here, you rarely see teams moving around that much. Um, beat e HLE and Damwon. Um, that singed pick is just disgusting out of the hands. I don't know if 12 12 will get rid of it, but the fact of the matter is that is crazy. I, I love it. I love it. Um, Ruler played really well. Chovy's playing good. Doran is okay. And Peanut's playing really good League of Legends too. So um, Gen G, as far as I'm concerned, are definitely an elite team, a world championship contending team. 
Um, I would say definitely the top five are world's contenders, especially on this list. And you could probably go all the way down to probably 10th and make a case. Um, third, victory five. Victory Five are currently 3-0, beating FPX and LGD um, without their mid laner and Rookie. Rookie's not playing. They have Dream playing, and Dream was ready for the LPL. If you recall my um, preseason videos, I thought he was solid. Um, and Carsa was replaced by XLB for a, game, a series, and they still won, which was the jungler. So they are 3-0 in all three games they didn't have their mid laner, and one of the series they didn't have their jungler. So, very, very good team. Rich is holding it down in top lane. Photic and PP God, as long as Senna is in the meta, that team has the best Senna bot lane in the world. They do. They just do. Second, we have JDG. JDG are 4-0. Um, JDG are 4-0. Uh, they beat EDG and OMG. 369 has been pretty good. Yagao has been playing very well for being a secondary or even third tier carry for the team. Fourth tier, really. I mean, he's more of a supportive player because Kanavi carries this team sometimes. Um, Hope and Missing have been better than I expected them to be. Um, they are definitely a very, very good team right now, continuing their success they had in mid to late spring. And then last place, we have T1. Honestly, if it wasn't for how well and clean they played against Sandbox today, I might have dropped them down to, like, probably fourth or fifth. Um, I don't know if I would put Gen G above them if they hadn't been so clean against um, Sandbox. I mean, they beat them easy, They beat them in a very convincing fashion. Um, you know, uh, you, you, we give G2 a ton of credit for their bot lanes and, and their crazy picks. A Yasuo out of Caria and a Camille support out of Caria. Guys, first place. They're first place. Um, that's it for my power rankings for this week. Comment down below with what you liked, what you don't like. Uh, like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Stay tuned later today for my sneak peek. And thank you for watching.